Welcome everyone to this latest episode of Jim and Java. I'm Jim Dempsey. Well, welcome everyone. As we start to move into the new year, uh, we are into the second week of the new year already. It's hard to believe that time is moving so fast. Uh, if you watch my video last week on Jim and Java, we addressed what are some of the key items that we want to be focusing in on in the new year. I'll link that video up above if you want to watch that video at another time. You're probably already just finishing up, if you haven't already finished up, on tying up the loose ends for the year. You probably, uh, things are starting to wind down a little bit now from your year on follow-up. And I hope once again that you had just a, a great end of the year and that things are, are moving positively into a new year for you. So I'm really excited to have that. I'm always excited to have you as part of this community of uh, individuals who are with a strong desire and striving to increase income and become fully funded. And I am just, uh, it, for me, I'm proud and it's a privilege to be able to be here to come alongside you and help you in your journey to do one of the most uh, important and sometimes, oftentimes, perceived as one of the most difficult parts of helping to run a nonprofit and being part of a nonprofit. And that is developing those relationships, building those partners for the long haul. And that's what it's my desire to make that easier for you. I don't want this to be uh, this part of your nonprofit responsibility to be a necessary evil to have to raise money. I'd rather it be something that you learn to just enjoy and to really grow in the experience of getting to share with individuals the opportunities that exist with your organization. Bringing people in as new partners and new owners with your organization, co-owners, is one of the most exciting things that you can possibly do. And I'm excited to be here with you and to share those opportunities. So let's dive right in to our question for today. Our question today is from Sally in Colorado Springs, Colorado. And Sally asks, how do I keep up momentum after a strong year end? Our giving usually drops off a lot in January. Well, Sally, what a great question. I appreciate that so much. Um, I also love the uh, assumption that you had a great year this year, and I really do hope that you did. Uh, I hope that this was just a record-breaking, a landmark year for your organization, and I do for each and every one of you. I really hope that you had a great, great year end, and I honestly hope that these videos help to contribute to that exciting year end. And I get it. January can sometimes be a real... Uh, can be a real downer from the standpoint that so many of your partners geared up with their giving towards year end and all of a sudden it's it's like think the water just the tap just got turned off and the water stopped coming through the pipes and it can really seem like January can be a really difficult month. Uh, June for some reason tends to be the same way as people start to head into vacations and they forget about their regular giving to their their nonprofit organization of choice. Uh, and so it really is important at this time, almost as much as any time, to really ramp up your communication at this time. Um, when you are, if you have been dating someone for a long time and make the decision to ask someone to marry you, that's not the time to let down and to say, well, the person said yes, uh, we're now engaged or we are married and let's let up on the courtship. Courtship needs to be continued. As somebody who's been married uh, 39 years this year, I know that courtship is extremely important, even as you head into your 20th, 25th, 30th, 35th year, and nearing your 40th, uh, those things are important. It's exactly the same with our partners. We need to make sure that when we get that year-end gift, we don't kind of idle a little bit, uh, using a car analogy, don't idle in your relationship. Continue to keep your foot on the gas pedal. And what I mean by that is that you need to let them know the successes of how their money's used. Sometimes that can take weeks, sometimes that can take months. Uh, we have a standard practice in, in our organization of sending out reports six months from a person's gift because we find that it usually takes about six months to really see the full scope of how someone's money is used. And so we have a cycle that if someone gives on January 1, 2021, we're somewhere around um, July 1. We are putting out 
a uh, report to those individuals. Someone gives in July, we're putting out a report in December. Somebody gives in December, uh, and, and you understand what I'm saying. Uh, we put out a report about successes, and it's important uh, you, that your people, I, I've talked so many times about focusing in on the results. What's the outcome? What happens with that person's gift or that person's investment? However, they look at your the giving to your organization in what way they look at it and it's important that you let them know was there a return on investment and when i say return on investment uh, i don't necessarily mean bottom line as we do when we invest in stocks but i do mean change lives lives that are impacted and again the principle that you'll hear me continue to say over and over again people give to people justified by the cause and what that means is that you want to continue to put before people the an individual, whether you can use their first name, last name, pseudonym, uh, or even a photo of that person, connect those people. It connects the partner, the donor, to the person whose life was changed. It puts reality, it puts a face to the gift and to the life that was changed, and that's so important. Why do child sponsorship programs do so well? Because you're putting a face to the outcome, and that is just so important as you move forward. So the the big thing that I want to, the big takeaway, is I want you to continue to ramp up communication. Uh, unfortunately, I think I've mentioned it more than a few times, that uh, there are as much as 80% of donors say that they never received a thank you from the nonprofit organization that they gave a gift to. I hope you are not one of those organizations. I hope you got a thank you out the door in 24 is always one of my mantras, and so I hope you got that out quickly. But then follow up soon after, and January is a good month to do so. Follow up with some lives that have been changed as a result of their gift, or even lives are changed from gifts like yours. So it can still be, it doesn't have to be the exact person whose life was changed, but it can be people like this their lives will change. But now is the time to ramp up the communication. Don't make the mistake that a lot of nonprofit organizations make. They get a gift and they don't, other than a thank you, um, the partner doesn't hear from them again for three, six, eight months. And it can frustrate a, a donor or a partner. I've heard so many donors and partners complain the fact that their nonprofit only contacts them when it's time to recruit for their walkathon, jogathon, their their dinner, their banquet. It is so incorrect that you wait in between because honestly those partners feel taken for granted and i don't blame them so at this point january is really a time for you to build up momentum and if things are a little bit quieter in your office now would be a really good time to actually get some of those appointments uh with some individuals that maybe you haven't yet met who gave gifts at year end um it, it remember the strategy that i've mentioned in prior videos the 333 strategy uh three visits three phone calls, three notes, cards, letters. And so now might be a great time to start incorporating that strategy, but also might be a great time, especially to meet with some of your critical few as things start to wane down in that time. So Sally, I hope that answered your question. I hope that helped. And uh, just as I say, take away, just ramp up your communication in January. It's one of the best things that you can do and carry that on through the year. So I hope you uh, hope this was helpful for um, not only Sally, but uh, each and every one of you. Uh, uh, thank you so much for the opportunity we have to be together and for taking the time today. Also, if you have not subscribed yet, love to have you as a subscriber. We're continuing to build our community of uh, nonprofit leaders who are trying to make a difference uh, in the world through their organization, through their efforts. If you need to reach out with me for questions, to submit questions to Jim and Java, do so on Twitter at DevFStrats and use the hashtag Jim and Java. I'm out on Instagram. Uh, please look especially on Instagram for our Monday morning three tips for increasing income for the week for you. Uh, we're getting great feedback from that series. You can reach me at Instagram at Dev Effectiveness Strategies, and you can always reach me via email at uh, developmenteffectivenessm at gmail.com. And look for me out on Facebook as well in our Facebook group, Development Effectiveness Strategies. So as I always say, it is our goal to strive to help you increase income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thanks a lot. See you next week.